Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the best GoPro settings for drones. And the best settings actually are going to change based on what you're doing, whether that be freestyle or tracking a subject or something else. So in this video, I'm going to explore the nuances and the thought process behind selecting the settings so that you can choose the best settings for your application and get the best footage possible. I'm also going to try to make this as applicable as possible to different models of GoPro. So whether you have an older GoPro, a newer GoPro, or the latest and greatest GoPro that I can't afford, you can walk away from this video knowing exactly what settings to use to get the best footage possible. Okay, I've reset all the settings to the defaults. Let's run through these one by one and talk about the best settings for your particular application, starting with resolution. So generally, you just wanna go with the highest resolution possible. It's gonna give you the sharpest image, the most cropping capability in post. However, there is a caveat to this, and that is with older GoPros, the bit rate is lower. So if you have a lot of motion in your video, or you're doing freestyle, that kind of thing, it actually can be a good idea to go to a slightly lower resolution because the bit rate per pixel will be higher so you'll get less artifacting from compression. So if you have a Hero 5 or older, I'd recommend shooting in 2.7K for faster movements or freestyle. For any other application, just go with the highest resolution possible. Now you can see on the top row here, we also have some four or three options. So the second row of resolutions is widescreen 16.9, which is the aspect ratio of this video you're viewing. It's what we're all used to. However, for subject tracking or filmmaking, it's actually better to shoot in 4.3. Now, obviously your project wouldn't be in 4.3, but the 4.3 image uses more of the sensor. So widescreen actually cuts off the top and bottom of the sensor, whereas 4.3 uses more of the sensor. So it's actually more field of view and more image to work with if you shoot in 4.3. And that is what you want if you are gonna edit the video in post. You can move the image up and down more. So for freestyle, I just leave it in 16.9, but if you're doing subject tracking, filmmaking, that kind of thing, shoot in 4.3. Let's move on to frame rate. Movies are almost always shot in 24 frames per second. That really gives that artistic movie magic feel to the footage. However, for drone footage where the movement tends to be fast and there's fast panning a lot, 24 frames per second can look a little bit unnatural because it just has a hard time capturing all the motion because there just aren't as many frames per second. However, on the other end of the spectrum, 60 frames per second or higher, it does give sort of an in the room feeling because the frame rate is so high, but it loses that artistic feeling. It just doesn't feel super natural in my opinion. So a lot of drone pilots will shoot in 30 frames per second because it still has some of that movie magic artistic feel, but does a better job at capturing motion. So 30 frames per second is really a sweet spot for drones, but obviously if your project is already shooting in 24, I'd go with 24. And if you're shooting in slow motion, obviously you can go to a higher frame rate, which may require you to lower the resolution. Next up is our lens field of view. By default, it is wide, and this is really what GoPros are good at. So for subject tracking and filmmaking, uh, I would leave it in wide. If you go down to linear, it can have a bit of a more natural look just because there's less distortion. However, because of the large amount of motion that drone footage often has, wide tends to look more natural, and you can always crop it down a bit if you want that more linear look. Now, if you're flying freestyle or you really want the sensation of speed, you can actually go up to Super View, which takes that 4.3 uh, image and it smashes it down to widescreen 16.9. If you're looking at a subject or a person or something, you don't want to use Super View because it's going to smash them and make them look fat. But if you're doing freestyle, a Super View actually makes it look like the ground is rushing by faster. It lets the viewer see more, therefore it becomes more engaging. So Super View is great for freestyle, for filmmaking or subject tracking. I would stick to wide. Up next is Hypersmooth, and Hypersmooth is a really great way to get stabilized footage without a lot of work, and it's really good because it uses the gyro and accelerometer data from the camera to figure out how to stabilize the footage, which is not something a video editor like Premiere Pro can do. However, the GoPro desktop app now has a real steady built in, which also uses the recorded sensor data. And 
This actually gives you more flexibility in post. So really you wanna leave Hypersmooth off and then add the stabilization later with the GoPro desktop app if stabilization is desired. We're gonna skip these next three, just turn them off and we'll move on to all the ProTune options. Now, first up is bitrate. And this is basically going to drive how big your file is and it's how much information per second is used to store the image data. So you want the most information possible because that's gonna give you the best image with the least compression artifacting and it's also gonna give you the most flexibility in post. So just set this to the highest setting available on your camera. Up next is the shutter speed, and shutter speed is super important. It makes a huge difference in how your video looks. If you go out and fly on auto in a sunny environment, your footage is gonna look very choppy because the shutter speed is going to be very short. The general rule of thumb is you want the shutter speed to be half as long as your frame rate. So if your frame rate is 30 frames a second, each frame is 1 30th of a second long. So you'd want your shutter speed at 1 60th of a second long because that is half of 1 30th. Now going with these longer shutter speeds really requires you to use some kind of ND filter like I have here in almost all lighting environments. And what an ND filter does is it limits the amount of light that gets into the camera sensor. So GoPros have a fixed aperture, which means they have no way of controlling how much light gets into the sensor. So the only way to control it is to use an ND filter. So because we're increasing the duration of the shutter, that is letting more light into the sensor. So we actually need to bring the amount of light back down by limiting the amount of light into the sensor with these ND filters. So if you're shooting in like a sunny environment around midday, you're gonna want like an ND16 or ND32 filter, which is darker. And if you're shooting closer to sunset or in a shadier environment, you're gonna wanna shoot with a ND4, ND8, or no ND filter at all. Now, like I said, 1 60th of a second is the rule of thumb. However, because there's a lot of motion, sometimes this can add too much motion blur. So you may want to decrease this down to 1 1 20th of a second, and that reduces the amount of motion blur and it lets the viewer see a little bit more detail, a little less blur. So it depends on what look you're going for. 1 60th or 1 1 20th is gonna make a huge difference in your footage. It's not gonna look so choppy. It's gonna have that cinematic feeling to it. So ND filters and changing the shutter speed are really important for getting the best looking footage out of your GoPro. Moving on to white balance. I just leave this at auto, but of course, if you don't want your white balance changing all over the place on you, you may want to set that manually. Up next is ISO min, and you just want this set to the lowest value possible and we want a range of ISO values with the ISO min and ISO max settings so that the camera can control the brightness of the image automatically. So typically the auto shutter would help control the amount of light entering the camera, but because we fixed the shutter speed, the only way the camera can control the exposure is with the ISO. So we have to kind of run this balance between the shutter speed, the ISO settings, and our ND filter selection and make sure the image isn't over or underexposed. So the ISO max value, I usually have this set to 800 or 1600 and I wouldn't go higher than 1600 because the image starts to get grainy at that ISO value, but you want that range between like 100 to 800 or 100 to 1600. The GoPro is smart, it will change the exposure. So if you fly into the shade all of a sudden, it will increase the ISO, increase the exposure to bring out all of those details as long as you allow that with the settings. Now, if you're real hardcore, you can of course make these two values the same and that way the GoPro has no control over the exposure. So if you're filmmaking, you want that absolute control, make those two values the same. If you're just flying freestyle, just go like 100 to 1600 or 100 to 800. Next up is sharpness. You want to set this to low. Sharpness eats up a bit rate and it also does not allow you as much flexibility in post because you can just add sharpness in post and it does the exact same thing the camera will do, whereas it's a lot harder to take away sharpness in post. Next is color. Uh, GoPro color adds some saturation and contrast. So if you're just gonna shoot a video and post it on the internet without editing it, GoPro color is great but you really wanna set this to flat so that you can do the color grading yourself. And it just gives you, once again, more flexibility in post 
to apply LUTs and that kind of thing. Lastly are the audio settings. And honestly, for drone footage, you're really not gonna care about your audio because all you're gonna have is wind noise and prop noise. Some freestyle pilots like to have prop noise in their videos, but I'm not gonna make any particular audio setting recommendations because different models of GoPro have very different sound qualities and sound settings. So for that, I'm just gonna cop out and say, go try out the different settings and see what you like. That is it for this video. I hope you learned something from this video or at least enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And one last thing I wanna mention is that the Patreon benefits are changing. So now not only will you get Discord benefits, but you will also get your name in the end screen of the video. So if you get value out of these videos, please consider becoming a Patreon. It really makes a big difference. Thanks for watching.